Hey, what is going on, everyone? And welcome back to the Axe Frontier YouTube channel. First and foremost, as always, I hope you and your families are all doing well. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Glad to have you tuning in. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some Casper news. But before we do that, first, as always, I want to thank God. I want to thank God for the day of life. And I want to pray for all the parents out there today. As a parent myself, I know it can be difficult at times. But it's one of the most important and most rewarding things about life. May you give the parents out there the courage, the wisdom, and most importantly, <laughs> the patience. The patience to raise good kids and kind souls. Society is hurting more than ever, and it can use a little compassion and kindness. Amen. Now let's get into the content for today. So if you caught yesterday's video, in case you haven't, you can check it out right here. I mentioned the refundable gas fees. If you haven't seen it, essentially when Casper 2.0 rolls out, it's going to allow enterprises to be able to use a revolving float of Casper tokens to process transactions in which the gas fees will be refunded to the user slash contract. For Meta, all transactions will have a refundable gas. If an account pays, the fees come back to the account. If a contract pays, the fees come back to the contract. There was a lot of speculation on how that would affect the CSPR token demand and hence the value. But here first, another huge shout out to my boy Lance for being active and sharing this response he got back from the team in regards to the refund gas model. Definitely go give him a follow on Twitter at Lance IANO. The token needs to be held for enough time. The gas is still a limiting factor for deploy flooding, but not longer. So the funds are held for a bit, then released. So you can fund a contract with a balance that should run your transaction volume. Instead of an ongoing cost, it is a fixed investment for running the code that will eventually be available to withdraw at some point in the future should you not want to run the contract anymore. An asset versus operation expense is that the token is tied up for a while, but will be released. So it is an asset that is allocated for running expenses, which is returned after time. So instead of funds being consumed, they return to an asset. It's no longer an operational expense. It's just an asset. As the utilization slash transaction goes up, the size of the flow needs to as well. This is a topic that I'm sure we'll see more discussion around in the Casper community. I reached out to Renal Manahar, the CEO of Casper Lab, and in my talks with him, we're actually going to be setting up an AMA style video around this particular topic as we get closer to 2.0 in order to explain how this is in fact a very good thing for the protocol get all the details out behind this and hopefully answer some of the community questions but again this is more to come when 2.0 gets ready to launch pivoting over we have some exciting news casper labs to tokenize and list equity shares on the inx platform inx is the first fully regulated platform that merges traditional markets with blockchain offering the trading of digital security tokens and cryptocurrencies the INX token was the first public SEC registered security token to IPO on the blockchain, meaning that holders own equity in the company just like traditional stocks. Some of the banks they work with include Barclays, JP Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley, BNP Paribas, and Credit Suisse. The collaboration will open up Casper Lab shares to a potential global liquidity pool of retail and institutional investors in over 60 countries through the INX1 platform the only fully regulated platform for listing and trading both SEC registered security tokens and cryptocurrencies. This is a more in-depth article by PR News. Bob Ajodemi, the VP of Capital Markets at INX states, from the moment we started speaking with Casper Labs, it was clear that tokenizing its equity and giving shareholders access to global liquidity through the INX Securities ATS or Alternate Trading System exchange would be a watershed moment for the blockchain industry. The listing of Casper Labs equity on the INX1 platform is scheduled for September 2023, allowing prospective buyers ample time to sign up on the INX platform. I don't believe you need to be an accredited investor for this, which if that happens to be the case, I am most definitely going to try to participate in this. Although this isn't about the Casper token, this is extremely positive for blockchain moving forward. The tokenization and listing of Casper Labs equity represents a pivotal moment in the industry solidifying tokenization as a leading use case 
driving the global adoption of digital assets by retail and financial institutions. Now, jumping over to Nucleus Finance News, and we've covered this quite a bit on the channel already, but if you're new and want to learn more about this in a bit more detail, definitely watch this video right up here. But in a nutshell, uh, Nucleus Finance is a joint venture of Casper Labs and a company called Ariadne. And Nucleus Finance is tokenizing financial contracts by leveraging the Actus standard, which is currently a liaison to the ISO TC68 subcommittee 9 on information exchange for financial services around banking, securities, and other financial services, and will soon be part of the ISO standard body. So I think bridging what, what Gall said and this notion of trust, I, th I think that's the direction of where technology is taking us. Nucleus Finance has started from that very premise. Nucleus Finance, is, it's atomic. It started from the, from the foundation of definition. And from that, we feel that we can go after a $50 trillion financial contract industry. That was Sanjay Gosale. He's the CEO of Nucleus Finance. That was him presenting at the SALT conference in New York City earlier this year, talking on the transformation of the financial markets through tokenization. It was announced today that Nucleus Finance becomes a member of the Capital Markets and Technology Association. The CMTA is an independent association that was formed by leaders from Switzerland's financial, technological, and legal sectors to create common standards around issuing, distributing, and trading securities in the form of tokens using DLT through legal standards certification process and standard smart contracts. Aside from trading securities and tokens, the CMTA also seeks to adopt standards and systemize good practices at the regulatory, accounting, and technical levels in order to facilitate the treatment of digital assets by financial intermediaries. You can scroll to the members list and see Nucleus Finance right here. Now, standardization is going to play a key role in adoption of tokens and DLT technology. Um, and you'll see that theme throughout this video here. So in digging around, I also came across this. Nucleus Finance joins ITSA, which is the International Token Standardization Association. This is back from November of 2022. ITSA is a nonprofit organization and special interest group that is aiming at setting the standards for the token global economy through one identification using the International Token Identification Number through classification using the international token classification framework and through analysis using their international token database. The international token identification number ITIN is an open market standard for the safe and secure identification of cryptographic tokens and their use in DeFi and NFTs across blockchains. This reduces the risk of confusing ticker symbols, for example, Bitcoin trades using ticker symbol XBT, BTC, or BTX. The International Token Classification is a framework for classifying cryptographic tokens according to various different dimensions. Currently, the ITC includes 10 dimensions covering economic, technological, and legal aspects. It is already applied to the top 1,000 plus tokens and will be continuously updated and extended through the classification of more tokens as well as the addition of further dimensions and classes. Token base builds upon the ITIN and the ITC and it is continuously extended and updated provides extensive time series data for the analysis of the top 1,000 plus cryptographic tokens, including DeFi tokens, NFTs, stablecoins, DAO, governance tokens, etc. One of their solutions utilizes WM Data and Service. WM Data and Service is the central authority and data provider for the global financial market. They also provide the financial industry with master data, identifiers, and market information. This is from September of last year, 2022, as part of the cooperation agreement ITSA and WM Data and Service are for the first time providing traditional financial markets with uniform database access to digital crypto markets. For this purpose, the financial information service provider WM Data and Service uses a token base provided by ITSA and other essential master data on tokens on this basis. The cooperation between WM Data and ITSA established what is known as the International Token Reference. This is basically going to link established identifiers with the new ones. The old ones being the International Security Identification Number, the classification of financial instruments, which have been established in the financial market for some time and are also used by regulators, are going to be basically linked to the new ones that we mentioned, the ITIN and the ITC. According to Torsten Ulrich, the Managing Director of WM Data and Service says, with our international token reference product, we built the bridge to the processing and management of digital assets in the existing settlement systems of banks and exchanges. He also says with the ITR, we support the settlement of these innovative assets. It also enables the quantification of risk, 
They may arise from new technology, for example, through different cryptographic procedures or consensus mechanisms. Remember that WM Danton partnered with Nucleus Finance as an important step in the digitalization of the security sector. Together, Nucleus Finance AG and WM Danton Service have further developed this new service for tokenization as a service as part of a joint project. An initial proof of concept project for a classic bond and structure product was successfully implemented based on the data from WM Data and Service and systems from Nucleus Finance AG. Based on algorithmic smart financial contracts, efficient, secure, and verifiable tokenization of the security is enabled. And remember, they're leveraging the open source, the ACT standard. A big component behind tokenization of financial instruments is going to be how they handle and mitigate systemic risk. Here's Ralph Kubli, board member of the Casper Association, explaining on why the importance of algorithmic-based smart financial contracts are necessary. Finance is the exchange of cash over time, right? I give right. you money today and you give me money back, whatever we agree, that's finance. And that is slightly more complex to solve, you know, in a decentralized environment than a payment. Right? But if your security that you're delivering, if, if that contains cash flows, and you do not have that in a machine readable or machine executable form that is standardized, then you're gaining nothing. Then you just solved one problem, which is a big problem, I agree. But as soon as you move away from the cash-like instruments and you move to cash, you know, to any kind of ABS, any kind of MBS, you know, CMBS or MBS environments, instruments, it, we are back to 2008. If you don't have a more efficient way of understanding the cash flows that occur and occurred and will occur in this instrument, Nobody, nobody will switch to this new settlement environment because, because the efficiency on the price discovery and the security on the D side, on the delivery side is not given, right? That's what we're building and we have some traction and hopefully in like three, four months, we, I can already say we have, we have people that are potentially, you know, life cycle managing tens of billions of dollars of assets. Ralph mentioned the 2008 crisis, WM Daten Service is also Europe's largest issuing authority for the legal entity identifier, LEI, which is like a barcode used across markets and jurisdictions to uniquely identify any legal entity that is engaged in financial transaction. Why do we need LEIs? And this is according to the Office of Financial Research. When Lehman Brothers collapsed in September of 2008, regulators and private sector firms were unable to assess quickly and fully the extent of market participants' exposure to Lehman and how the vast network of market participants was connected. The financial crisis underscored the need for a global system to identify financial connections so regulators and private sector firms could, be better, under, could better understand the true nature of risk exposure across the financial system. So just a quick little recap here. We have WM Datton Service, the central authority of financial market data, developing the international token reference standard with ITSA a global token standards body. And then shortly after it was announced that WM Datton partnered with Nucleus Finance and Nucleus Finance is leveraging the Actus standard. It is tied to the ISO body standard as well. And then shortly after that, Nucleus Finance joins the ITSA as a member. Now today, Nucleus Finance joins the CMTA, the Capital Markets Technology Association that focuses on, you guessed it, standards. Well, this wraps it up for today. If you're new to the channel and find value in my content, please consider liking and subscribing. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at the X Frontier as well. And as always, pioneers, remember nothing ventured, nothing gained. This is the way.